Hi, today we're going to need to discuss absolute value. So absolute value is something that we define in math as the distance between the number on the number line and zero. Um, so if you try to find the absolute value of negative three, think about where ne uh, I'm sorry, positive three. Uh, think about where positive three is on the number line. Well, positive three on the number line is going to be located right there. So the question is, how many units is it away from zero? So if you count them, you can see that this distance here is 3. That means the answer here is 3. What is the absolute value of negative 3? Well, negative 3 is here. right? So it's obviously not the same answer, but it is actually the same distance from 0. So the distance here is also 3, and the absolute value of negative 3 is also 3. A um, couple things that I need to tell you. First of all, since we define the absolute value as a distance, distance is something that cannot be negative. You cannot say that something is negative 5 meters away. You say it's 5 meters away. Uh, we ignore the direction in which we may follow, so the outcome cannot ever be negative. So the absolute value of any number uh, is going to be greater than or equal to zero, cannot be negative. And the second thing that I want to mention, there is sometimes some confusion exists when students think, oh, you just change the sign. No, you don't just change the sign. Because here, yes, it does look like you change the sign, but over here you don't. It was positive three and you still got positive three. So you, it's more like you remove the negative sign. Okay, but you don't really change it. So let's take a look at some problems. Alright, so we have some examples here. Um, when you have multiple operations, you will uh, treat absolute value as something that must be done first. So in example 1, absolute value of 5 minus 4, you will need to do absolute value of 5 first, which is going to be, as I hope you understand, that's 5 minus 4, it's going to give us 1. All right. Example two, absolute value of negative one plus four. Again, we have to do uh, anything inside the absolute value first. It's almost like those grouping symbols. So absolute value of negative one is one and plus four. And the answer is going to be five. Example three. Okay, here we have absolute value and inside the absolute value we have an operation. So that operation must be performed first. So what we do here is we have to do 1 minus 3, we keep the absolute value, so 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Then now we can do the absolute value and that's going to give us 2. Example 4, we have two absolute value symbols, two sets of them, so we need to do each one of them first, and then you have a plus, so we're going to have to add whatever the numbers are going to be. So the absolute value of 1 here is 1, plus the absolute value of negative 3 here is positive 3, and 1 plus 3 is 4. So I hope it's easy so far. We're going to take a look at more examples, of course. So, moving on. Okay, um, I... Uh, well, let me take a look at number five, example 5 first. So we have negative, an absolute value of 5, and then minus the absolute value of negative 3. So the absolute value uh, of 5 when you do this, you have to ignore this negative for a moment. That's not. That's a negative in front of the absolute value. The absolute value itself will come out to be positive. So, let me do it a little different here. So the absolute value of 5 right there is going to give you 5, right? And the absolute value of negative 3 here is going to give you positive 3. Correct? So if you look at the rest of it, you still have that negative in front of it. 
So it's negative 5 and then minus 3 and that's going to give you negative 8. Okay? There's one important thing. Yes, I did mention earlier that the absolute value it has to be positive or zero, cannot be negative. And some some may look at this and say, but why did you get negative 5 here? Well, I did not get negative 5 from the absolute value of 5. The absolute value of 5 gave me 5. The reason this is negative is because it was negative in front of this absolute value. So, uh, so everything is perfectly fine. Example 6, we have the absolute value of negative 3 minus 7. So as we already saw earlier, you have to do this uh, subtraction here first, which means it's going to be the absolute value of negative 3 minus 7 is negative 10 and the absolute value of negative 10 is positive 10. Example 7. For some reason sometimes students are confused with problems like this and they make a, a pretty common mistake. They think that the negative here and the negative there can be somehow put together and uh, you are going to get a positive that is not correct. The negative 3 inside the absolute value, you have to take care of that first. Then you attach the negative in front of it. Kind of like what we did here in example 5. It doesn't matter that the number inside of the absolute value was positive or negative, it's still going to be handled the same way. So that means we're going to have negative. The absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So we got negative 3 minus 7 and that answer is going to give us negative 10. Okay. You have to be very careful, you have to understand this and uh, like with anything else when you start seeing more complex expressions slow down and uh, take your time so that you can get it right and not make mistakes. So example 8, you have multiplication here but again anything inside absolute value symbols needs to needs to be done first that means we're gonna have well hopefully you already understand the idea by now you have negative the absolute value of 2 so it's gonna give you negative 2 times here you have the absolute value of negative 3 that will give you 3 so we have negative 2 times 3 which is negative 6 all right A few more examples. Okay, so this example here is when you're given an algebraic expression that contains uh, um, an absolute value and you have to evaluate that for different values of the variable. So example 9, our expression is the absolute value of x minus 3, close the absolute value and then plus 3 uh, and we're going to need to evaluate that when x is 4 and then when x is negative 4. So as you know what you need to do with these problems. You substitute this value of x that's given to us into x in the expression. So in our case it's going to be 4 minus 3 absolute value and then plus 3. So the absolute value of 4 minus 3 that's the absolute value of 1 plus 3. The absolute value of 1 is 1 plus 3 and the answer here is 4. What about negative 4? Well, we do the same thing. We substitute negative 4. Or as students like calling that, plug it in. Not a big fan of that, but it's okay. But the proper term is substitution. So negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Plus 3. The absolute value of negative 7 is 7. Plus 3. And the answer here is 10. Example 10. As I already showed you one example with numbers before, you have a negative, negative, negative the absolute value of negative x, minus 3. So these two negatives cannot be merged. You have to keep them both. So let's start with that. So it's negative. Inside we have negative x. x is 5, so this is basically the opposite of x, which means it's going to be negative 5 minus 3 right so very carefully we keep the negative in front 
the absolute value of negative 5 is positive 5 and then minus 3 that's going to give us negative 8 we just emphasize this one thing one more time for you when we see negative x that means the opposite of x so whatever x is negative x is its opposite it's going to be helpful with the next problem so let's see next problem we have what we have um, x is negative 5 so we're still going to put the negative the absolute value so negative x is the opposite of our x our x is negative 5 so its opposite is going to be 5 minus 3 so the absolute value of 5 is 5 and then the negative in front of it makes it negative 5 and still minus 3 and we actually ended up getting the same answer here okay so this is how it works and I hope it's helpful